speakers. Uh, today we have gathered here to celebrate an icon of our time and whose work in literature, art, humanity, and leadership is unparalleled. Professor Gumit Singh, Madam France, uh, Shirin Manishankaya, and uh, Professor Raju, <coughs> Professor uh, Rabotam, uh, all the professors, lecturers, and my dear fellow youngsters, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor and privilege of extending to you the warm greetings of His Majesty the King of Bhutan and the people of Bhutan. I would like to thank the Vonichere University and the South Asia Foundation for the warm reception and the generous hospitality extended to me since my arrival in Chennai. In fact, it was my first time visit uh, in the south of India. I would like also to convey my uh, sincere appreciation and gratitude to Madame France and the South Asia Foundation for inviting me to be part of the today's event. More so, I am extremely pleased to be sharing with you the, the with August gathering today my views on the role of a young parliamentarian in the regional cooperation as to celebrate the legacy of the late Madanjit Singh. Having served in UNESCO for about half a century, his name is synonymous to this streamed organization itself. It is beyond doubt that everyone gathered here would share the same opinion as mine every time we remember the late Madanjit as part of its celebration and keep alive the tradition, the university has been inviting the outstanding alumnus of recognizable personalities to participate and deliver the Madanjit Singh's memorial lecture every year. To this, I accolade the university and the faculties for such meaningful arrangement, and I am once again honored to be part of the uh, event and standing here with you all today. Frankly speaking, and in frankly, frankly admitting that I am neither qualified nor an outstanding personality yet, but being one of the recipients of the prestigious South Asia Foundation Scholarship and reaffirming my firm position now as a, one of the youngest parliamentary, I am deeply humbled to pay my gratitude and tribute to the late Madanjit Singh. This occasion, therefore, is rare as gem and special as my very own living. Your Excellency, now, though geographical structure of Bhutan may be less known to many of you, yet, uh, again, this may be an occasion to share a glimpse about my route. Something that interests me and I'm sure it will also be of interest to you all. I was born in a highland community called Laya under Gasa district, which uh, uh, Sri Manishanka has mentioned. And to put it simple, I'm son of a nomad, kind of a tribe. <laughs> we rear one world famous animal species called yaks, Y A K S, yaks. Laya, my village. Though a popular destination for tourists, but it is still not open to a motorable road. To my vanity, I was among the first to graduate from my village. And migration then was the news that stormed media. And quickly enough, I became quite a celebrity in my own country by default of being a nomad graduate. As saying goes, with difficulties come blessings, frankly speaking. My degree, first degree was the most prestigious scholarship bestowed directly from His Majesty the King, and that was how I earned my first engineering degree from Thailand. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my position among young politicians 
in my country was not without sacrifice and hard work. It was difficult to convince people to vote for a young, fresh graduate. And even worse, when the total voter is just 3,000. Can you imagine? In 2013, I have contested for the first time when I was just 26 years old. I tried, but did not succeed. Nevertheless, I stood up again for my dream and I am living that dream today, representing my people in the true sense. Your Excellency, I would like to share that Bhutan's House of Review or the National Council is led by one of the youngest chairperson since democracy was first in instituted a decade ago. Many young MPs won the seat in the parliament and including the young women MPs. As far the latest IPU record 2018, Bhutan is the only country in Asia where the share of a young MPs under the age of 30 is approaching 9.1% after Nordic countries with 10%. And do you know also the share of a young MPs under the age of 40 and 45 are 54.6% and 80% respectively. As we move on to confront the common challenges of eliminating the poverty, boost gender equality, addressing the youth issues, and managing environment and natural resources, adaptation and mitigation of the climate change, and building resilience to natural disasters, and, measure, and take countermeasures to terrorism, and promote human rights, and invest in renewable energy, among others in the region, I would like to reinforce that the solution is enhancing the regional cooperation and even more important to include the young parliamentarians in this movement. Despite you making up 35% of the population in South Asia, it is less encouraging to learn that only minimum percentage of them are in the parliament and their potential to promote socio-economic growth and enhancing their enhancing the gender equality are shortcoming in fact. Recently, I was attending the 140th in the Parliamentary Union Assembly at Doha, Qatar from the 6th to 10th April. The IPU research have revealed that in 2018, only 2.2% of the parliamentarians were under 30 years of age and 15.5% were under 40 years in lower chamber and unicameral parliaments in the region. As per the IQ report, promoting the participation of young people in the political life is becoming a higher priority worldwide. Over one third of 169 targets established as part of the United Nations, Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, relate to young people and their importance of their empowerment, participation, and well-being. 26 targets across SDGs relating to hunger, education, gender equality, decent work, inequality, climate change, specifically focused on youth. Young people's participation is also vital to the achievement of two SDGs, additional SDGs, on peaceful, just, and inclusive society, and on partnership and implementations. I believe that young MPs have a ro crucial role to play in eliminating the poverty and addressing the youth-specific needs and interests. Sometimes, the brightest idea emerge from young minds, especially on the issues they face in real life situations. Working towards common goal of achieving SDGs requires the partnership of the government, the private sector, civil society, and citizens to save this planet for the future. The right way is to include young parliamentarians in this strategic plans and foster mutual learning to support each other in the region. Your Excellency, 
At times, I have this pertinent thought popping up in my mind every time that if we, the younger generation, do, generations do not care about our future, who will and who should? Because we have longer years to live and we have a future to make. And we have the responsibility, logic, need and the rational to serve our country in a specific and world at large better. If then, why don't we add from now on? Climate change is hitting us hard and that is due to insatiable desire for so-called unsustainable development, a concept propagated by Western thought and therefore the world is deeply cornered in four walls. For an instance, if a cat is cornered by a dog and it has nowhere to escape, it fights back. Similarly, the nature and world has already begun fighting back on us like a cornered cat. As the world warms, the extreme weather are becoming more frequent and intense. Glacier lakes have been begun melting and sea levels are rising and prolonged droughts are putting pressure on food crops, many animal and plant species have been driven to extinction and polluted air have begun us causing lung cancer. Worst of all, a small country like ours, Bhutan, suffer the most impact out of others' carelessness. Though Bhutan maintains 72% under forest cover, though Bhutan is only a country in the world that is carbon neutral, for how long can we remain a carbon neutral? An avalanche of Indian and Chinese pollution alone can engulf the tiny Bhutan's effort of environmental conservation. It is hard to imagine what we as individuals can do to resolve a problem on this scale and severity. That is why I stand here today, especially as a young parliamentarian who cares for the world, groomed with the support of South Asia Foundation beyond engineering to serve the world better. I will wise out for the world happiness, I will protest for the peace and tranquility in the region. I will commit myself strongly for the legislative proceedings that can make the world better. It is never too late for us to take action and fight like our lives depends on it because they do. In fact, climate change is a global problem felt on a local scale and that will be around for decades and centuries to come. Your Excellency, generally speaking, to sum up all this, Increased regional cooperation is answers to all these problems. Like today, we must continue to exchange our views and think through global solutions to regional and country-based issues. To conclude, I would like to highlight that there's a need to highlight, uh, to encourage young parliamentarians in the political process to understand better the issues related to youth like unemployment, inequality, discrimination, and lack of access to quality education that is pressing in the region. Your Excellency, to empower young parliamentarians, there is a need to give them a voice in the policy and decision-making process of their respective government, provide them with the required skills and knowledge to engage with their governments more effectively and issues significant to young people. May I end my speech? paying tribute once again to Shri Madanjit Singh for playing a part in giving me the opportunity to lead, to become the leader I am today. Thank you once, one and all.